to be clear where the economy stands today and how we should pull out of the recession, I think we need to be very clear also as to why we were one of the worst affected countries during the crisis, why we went first into recession and seem only now to be coming out of it last, and why our public finances were the least prepared of any of the major countries. To the extent that servicing our borrowing is now more expensive here than it is for the Italian government in Italy, and why we should be paying more in debt interest than on defending our country or educating our children. Let's just remind ourselves what was happening in the fourth largest economy in the world. After 12 years of continuous growth, after massive increases in taxation, public sector productivity fell by 3.5% over those 12 years. Only half our school leavers now get five good GCSEs. One third of those unemployed in Seven Oaks this morning, after 12 years of a Labour government's education, one third of them who are out of work are under 25. Thirdly, our unit labour costs are now back to pre-ERM levels. And fourthly, if you measure UK GDP per capita against each of the 50 American states in purchasing parity terms, we come in 46th. They tax and spend and call that progress. I think a large part of the answer is the very unbalanced economy that the Labour government allowed to develop, over-dependent on an overheated housing market, a rapidly expanding public sector, and the boom in financial services. That had consequences for the public finances. The government failed to balance a budget for nine years. The Treasury fatally overestimated the tax revenues seven years in a row. But I suspect it also had consequences for the private economy. While our eyes were on the rise and fall of the banking sector, I was increasingly reminded of Thomas Paine's criticism of Edmund Burke in his reflections on the French Revolution, that he pitied the plumage but forgot the dying bird. I think we've forgotten the real economy beneath that particular boom. Now, to get the economy growing again, obviously, as the others have said, we have to restore our public finances, first and foremost. I think we, we will all agree on that. We have to deal with the deficit. And we have to deal with it completely, on a timetable, within two parliaments. And we need new rules, not simply an Office of Budget Responsibility, but new rules for the Office to police, so that never again are governments tempted into the excesses of deficit financing that we've seen. And we need cuts in public spending immediately in the next financial year. And of course, we need from those better public services. More competition in our public services, new providers, not just in schools, but across the board, in training, in further education, in job centres. We need more outsourcing, more shared services between all the little public agencies and public bodies out there in the country. And we need, as David Cameron has suggested, much more transparency through putting all this stuff online. But the issue isn't simply about the public finances. It's also, and the question we've been posed tonight, it's also about firing up the British economy, replacing that 5% or more of GDP that seems now to have gone missing. How we do that is the key question for the next government. And I offer you tonight one, one main idea, and if I'm not going to be accused by patients of fiddling around the edges, two smaller ideas as well. The first is we've got to find new ways of backing business. The government does back business, all governments back business, but I notice they give generous amounts of our taxes to large businesses. They don't, of course, always back small businesses who find it much harder to access these grants or to properly use 
these different advisory services. And it is the smaller businesses, of course, who bear the burden that the larger corporates don't do of all the new regulation that's been laid off them. The men and women who run small businesses have to be tax credit administrators. They have to be immigration officials checking the status of anybody who works for them. They have to be student finance supervisors on the loan repayment schemes. They have to be increasingly health and safety officers. Now all parties promise to cut the red tape, to shake up the advisory services, but I think we've got to do more than that. The Conservative Party has a proposal to lift for all new businesses to lift employment tax altogether for the first 10 employees they take on. Now, cutting corporation tax, maintaining our competitiveness on corporation tax, of course is important. But if it's right to lift the burden of employment tax on some new small businesses, then it must be right to start lifting it on all small businesses. And as the public finances allow, that I think is what we've got to do. The cost of employing people is still far too high for the smallest businesses in our country. They have every reason, facing employment tribunals, unlimited sex discrimination awards, the complexity of the tax credit system, every reason not to take on a single extra worker. And that's why I think for small businesses, we've got to lift the burden of employment taxes, give them back the right to hire and fire, give them back the right to require meaningful references and to discipline without fear of retributive and costly legislation, as well, of course, as making it more worthwhile for people to work. Two smaller uh, ideas on growth. First, we have to back exports. While the volume and share of our exports is not increasing, while demand r remains so depressed in the home market as people pay down debt and rebuild their savings, I think we've got to do more to support our companies who trade overseas. <coughs> and this may be called fiddling around the edges, but I would look again at withholding tax, particularly for those firms that have relatively small domestic profits to set against it, who are penalized <coughs> under the present system. And finally, as a small idea, I think we ought to look again at early years funding. The much maligned private equity industry I think has been a huge success in taking some of those family businesses out in the provinces and growing them to the next level. Where we've been so weak is the early years funding itself that seems to be done so much more successfully elsewhere, particularly in the United States. And I think it would be worth looking again at the very restrictive uh, eligibility and thresholds on venture capital trusts and simply find ways of encouraging more risk-taking and risk capital at the very early stage. Finally, I think I would only say this. We also need all of us to recommit to an enterprise economy, not simply as a means of, of redistribution, of social policy, or even of financing public spending, but as the driver of a freer society in which more people have more opportunity. We don't yet know the result of the next election. We do know we have at the moment a hung economy. We have to get it moving again. Sorting the public finances, improving the public services, rebalancing our economy and focusing on employment taxes, backing exports and reviving early years funding. Thank you.